allowed to do that one to another. So if we were not allowed to subject other Israelites in terms of slavery, so the only kind of slavery or servanthood that can take place among us, among the people of the commonwealth of Israel is what? Preparing them to be slaves for Yahweh. We can enslave the heathen and the pagans to bring them to a saving knowledge of Mashiach Yeshua and then to disciple them in the Torah. We can do that, but we can't do it. Yeshua said, it shall not be like that among you. You are all brothers. You cannot be like the, the Goyim, the Gentiles, who lord who lorded over each other and caused dominion to come up upon one another for humiliation and control and, and for, the, for the, the condescending and humiliation and degrading of other human beings and making them subservient to yourself. He said, that is the way the Goyim act, but among you it should not be that because you have one father, Yahweh. You have one teacher, Mashiach. You have one anointed, Yeshua HaMashiach, and you are all brethren. Can I hear a good amen? amen. I mean a good amen. 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 So wait a second. So when we talk about slavery among the people of the commonwealth of Israel, and we know that slavery will end when? When will slavery end? When will slavery end? When will the principle of slavery end? Never! The current, the current heavens and the current earth have not been done away with. The new heavens and the new earth will also include slavery. Because the principles of Torah are forever. Thy word, O Yahweh, is settled forever where? In the heavens. So when will the principle of slavery end? Never. Never. When will the principle of plural marriage end? Never. Never. When will the Moadim end? Never. 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 Ever. The things of Yahweh, Ecclesiastes sees, whatever Yahweh does is forever. The book of Kohelet tells us in chapter 3, whatever Yahweh does is forever, somebody. Amen. Amen. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So, and yet we see that the Hebrew word for slave or servant or worshiper is Evid. The, when we worship Yahweh, you, you know what the Hebrew word for the worship of Yahweh is? Avdut le Yahweh. When I call Raina and Bruno up later on in today, I'm calling them into slavery. Is this too heavy for you? Oh, I don't know what. When we, the, the very act of worship before Yahweh in Hebrew is called slavery. It's called avdut, which is the action of an event. The action of an event is avdut. Write it down. The worship of a servant of Yahweh before Abba Yahweh is avdut. Slavery in worship. It's the same Hebrew word. So we notice here that even though slavery, physical slavery, or subjugation of other Israelites by an Israelite is forbidden, yet it says clearly, turn your neighbor and say clearly, uh, clearly, it says clearly that Joshua was Moses' slave. Are you my slave? You ought to be. Are you your brother's slave? Yes. You ought to be. Are you your brother's keeper? And that's where the principle of slavery comes in. We are to, to make each other subject. We are to be subject one to another in the things of the Ruach, in the things of the Spirit. We are to be accountable one to another. We are not to be lone rangers. We are not to be individuals for Yahweh. We are not to be out there on our own. We are not supposed to be part of the Kihila, of the independent journalistic studies for the furtherment of human resources. We are supposed to be accountable and subject one to another, clothed in humility, the humility that says, Ani avdecha, I am your slave. What would you like me to do? How can I help you? How can I minister to you? How can I improve you? How can I bring more progress? How can I, how can I serve you to help you better serve Yahweh? Does that make any sense? Yes. So look at this. Joshua, before he can lead the people of Israel, had to learn avdut, slavery, servanthood to another human being. I wish it wasn't that way. I wish there was a better way, but there is no other way. 
If you're going to lead and be a leader in the people of Yahweh and in the Kehillah of Yahweh and be looked up to by the men and the women in the Kehillah of Yahweh, you're going to have to serve another leader or another human being in the Mahud HaShamayim because that is the way of divine government, that is the way of divine leadership and training and preparation for you to take your place in the things of Israel. Can I hear a good old man somebody? Amen. So the question is today, are you serving a leader or another leader so that you in turn can one day be called into service and serving Yahweh? And I hope the answer, for most of you here, the answer is yes. Because you, you, are, you are submitted to my authority in your life. Amen? Amen? And so that is part of being raised up in the kingdom of Yahweh. Being a servant or a slave. A lot, now a lot of believers talk service, but as soon as you ask them to do something, they are a wall. They're out to lunch. A lot of people talk about being served in or subservient, but the first time you ask them to do something that actually causes them to uh, uh, sweat, uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. or the first time they actually have to do something where they actually have to strain themselves, uh -oh. in terms of physical labor, hard labor. We don't, I've had people come. Can we talk? Yeah, we can talk. Shoshana, can we talk? That, what does this mean? Yes? yes? Are you just adjusting your head properly? Both. <laughs> Both. Yeah, I've had people come to me, Rabbi Moshe, I want you to know what I know that he knows that she knows that he knows that he knows. I am her, here to serve. I am here to be your servant. I am here to do anything you ask me to do. First time you ask me to move a tree, or to move a chair, or to move a broom, they're gone. <laughs> Because they thought service was all about microphones uh -oh, uh -oh. and beams and standing before men and looking good before men. But the first time you ask them to do something that really requires labor in the kingdom of Yahweh, they're AWOL, they're out to lunch. Do you know anybody like that? Anybody. I know a hundred people like that. How about you? In other words, I'm here to serve, but please don't ask me to do anything. I'm here to serve, brother. I promise you I'm here to serve. But just don't ask me to do anything where I have to sweat and move boxes uh -oh. and move cars uh -oh. or actually get something, take some matter and cause the matter to be moved. Uh -huh. So we go back to Shemot 33, 11, and we see that Yahweh uses the word Eved or servant or slave that before Yahushua could be Yahweh's chosen and anointed leader, as a young man, he departed not out of the tabernacle, and he was a servant to Moshe. So, question is, he departed out of the tabernacle. Part of learning how to be a slave is, you are a slave, notice, you are a slave not only to the leaders that Yahweh has put you on, and to one another, but you are a slave to the tabernacle itself. People ask me, how often should I come to the synagogue? Every time the door is open. That's right. How often should I be late? Never. How often should I be in the service? Every time the door is open. Now that doesn't mean you don't take an occasional time off. Because if you can't be a slave to the tabernacle of Yahweh, you're going to have a hard time being a servant to the people that are worshiping in the tabernacle of Yahweh. Can I hear a good old man? Because being a servant and a slave to the people of Yahweh, where do you find the people of Yahweh? In bars and nightclubs? Yahweh forbid. You find the people of Yahweh where? In the tabernacle of Yahweh. So if you're going to be a servant of servants, you're going to have to serve the people here, and you're going to have to be here on time, and you're going to have to be here every time the doors open. Come on, somebody. You're also quiet on me today. That's right. And that's how. You cannot serve the people without serving the tabernacle. Baruch Hashem, especially the tabernacle of David that is being restored. Because we know Yeshua is restoring the tabernacle of David that has fallen. He's taking all 12 tribes and bringing them together by the blood of Yeshua and making them echad in his hand. So why was Joshua and Moses slave? His evidence to be raised up as a what? Servant to Yahweh. That, brothers and sisters, is the goal of of biblical slavery. To take a man, evangelize the heathen, disciple the heathen, and release them in the sixth year, and, 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 and have them, sorry, teach them for six years, and release them in the seventh year, and if they don't want to be released, 
You made their life a living mezuzah, a living testimony. You bear, you bore their ear with an awl to the door of your house, and they become a living epistle, read and known by all men. They see the love of Yeshua and the love of Yahweh flowing through those who have led him to the saving knowledge of Yahweh and the discipleship in the things of Yahweh. And when it comes time for them to be released into the world, to be a light for Yahweh, they refuse to go because they have fallen in love with the love of Yeshua that they have seen in their master in the year of release. In the seventh year, they don't want, they can leave, or they don't want to leave. If they leave, they go out alone, and they leave the children and the wives to build up the kingdom of Israel for where they were taught. They, they, they sow where they were taught, where they were raised in the kingdom of Yahweh. And if they want to stay, they get to keep their wives and their children and serve Yahweh in the commonwealth of Israel. We learned that last week. What a loving Yahweh. What a loving Father. What an almighty, omniscient, omnipotent Yahweh. The slavery of Torah is not freedom. It's designed to send apostles into the world after a six-year discipleship program, and they can choose to be free in the seventh year of release, turning heathen into Israelites. But if they love their master and they want to keep their wives, plural wives, not one wife, wives, and their children, they're free to stay and to produce more seed and to fill the earth with the seed of Yaakov in fulfillment of Yahweh's promise. When he said that the children of Jacob would become the mellow Hagoyim, they would become the fullness of a nation. Some of you look bored. Amen, amen. Well, no. You want me to turn off the air conditioning? Oh, absolutely not. Don't go there. That'll get you excited. Don't go near it. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. I said Baruch Hashem. Amen. What a mean rabbi. <laughs> Tadada by Yahweh. Go with me to Bamidbar, chapter 12, and verse 7. So it's completely different. Yahweh's slavery was designed to catch pagans and turn them into Israelites, Daryl. You understand what I'm saying, brother? Oh, yeah. But we weren't allowed to enslave each other. If we're both Israelite brothers in Torah, I was not allowed to enslave you. You were not to enslave me. I was allowed to teach you how to serve Yahweh. And in order to teach you how to serve Yahweh, you would have to become my servant, and then you would be released to serve Yahweh on your own. Okay. I've told many people, the point of the Yeshua synagogue is not to keep you here for 25 years. It's to teach you, to train you, and then to release you to do the work of the ministry. Amen. The point is not to keep you here for 30 years. You wouldn't want to stay here for 30 years anyway. The point is to teach you, to train you, and release you so that you can do the work of the ministry. Amen. That doesn't qualify as a cult. Some people accuse us of being a cult. If we were really a cult, guess what? See that exit sign right there? Do you think there would be an exit sign? What would be the first thing I would do if we were a cult? Lock the doors. Lock the doors. Lock the doors and take out the light bulbs of the exit sign. And give a quota. Or take down the exit sign. Lying hypocrites. Jealous. Spirit of jealousy. Bamibar, 12 and 7. That's what happens when you're not serving Yahweh and serving your fellow man. You have too much time on your hands and you start thinking and trying to steal the fruit of other ministries. Uh -oh. It's called the spirit of Jezebel. And the truth about the spirit of Jezebel is guys got it a lot more than gals. Because men like to steal. They can't, they can't lead people to Yeshua. They can't disciple, so they want to steal somebody else's fruit. Right? Oh. So next time somebody tells you, well, she has a spirit of Jezebel, trust me, guys have it a lot more than gals. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. Baruch Hashem, Yahweh. But Midbar 12 said, look at this, Yahweh says, my Evan.